okay first we have to go to this page so we need a function uh, which will open the browser and which will take us to the web page so we need a setup function here so you say public void setup and the goal of this function will be to go to the web page and to open the web page take us to that page so that we can execute our test steps now any unit requires our setup function to be attributed with setup attribute then we need a public void test and this test we will be writing verify add row button functionality so that is what we are verifying in this test and this test will have a test attribute on it and same way we will have a cleanup that's a cleanup function that we are going to have and here we, we will have an attribute of tear down so this is a typical uh, test case structure for our n unit based tests so here in setup we know what we will be doing is we will be launching the browser so let's declare i web driver here now if we are using selenium then we need to define a driver now in order to use this selenium uh, this selenium interface what we need to do is we need to add reference to selenium binaries as well so we do a right click we go to manage nugget packages and here this time we search for selenium and let me select selenium so nugget will help us get the selenium related packages for us and once we find the selenium package in nugget package manager we'll install these reference to these selenium assemblies to our project so we will say okay and now we can see the web driver has been added over here so let's get back to our test i web driver we do control dot and it will say using and we are able to put the using clause for selenium based libraries now our goal is to open the browser so we'll say driver is equal to new for now let me put a firefox driver later on we will see how to make it a multi browser test so here firefox driver also let's do control dot enter and we can see the reference for that has been added on top now the, this will launch the browser next thing that we want to do is let's make our browser as full screen so driver dot manage dot uh, window dot maximize so this will take us to full screen next we do is driver dot manage dot timeouts so let's set uh, implicit wait timeout of time span dot from seconds and we make it uh, 20 seconds so this will help us in locating uh, the elements so this is launches browser the next step will maximizes browser and the third step will be uh, set locator timeout to be 20 second at max well after the setup is done another thing that we have to ensure is we want now uh, we basically have to execute our test steps because we have a browser launched N next we are ready to run our test steps so what we need to do is we need to take the browser to this page so that we are ready to do our steps so let's take the browser to that page driver dot get sorry it will be driver dot url equals this page so this will uh, browse to intended page now ideally in real world uh, typically we create a page object model and we use that that's the right way to design our framework but since here we are focusing only on the parallel execution of any unit framework so we are not uh, taking care of the design aspects as of now so we'll take a look at some refactoring might be required in order to reuse the setup and cleanup methods but uh, more than that we are not paying any attention to the design at this moment okay great so we have gone to the required URL now once we are here this is the web table that we see on the page so let's first locate the web page uh, web table 
so this is the ID of the table we call it data table so let's go there to our data table and we can see our data table is going to have few TR tags under it so ID okay it will not be directly under this this will be TR so we can see it has two rows as of now so let's go to our driver dot find element by dot ID and we have a data table available here so this will locate the table I web element table that we have so this will be initial table okay so now first thing that we want to do is first we want to count how many rows are already there in this table so in order to do that let's say initial row count that we get by doing table dot find elements under the table we are finding the elements by dot tag name because in a table rows will always be starting with tr tag and once we do that this will give us the all the elements and we can get the count of those elements here so now we are in pretty good state that we have got the table and we have get get count of initial rows after doing this what we will do is we will be clicking add button now we don't want to have a very monotonous test where we are adding row one row and we are validating row is added our test should be dynamic and at runtime it should be clicking this button a random number of times we want this test case to be dynamic in nature so what we will do is click add row button n number of times now how will we get the value n is that will be random int n is equal to uh, there is a random class in c sharp so we say random r a n d equals new random and we will say uh, rand dot next and in this next what we will do is we will give it a min value and a max value so we want from 10 to 20 times this button to be clicked so this last number that we are giving that will not be inclusive so what it will do is n will get a value from 10 to 20 inclusive of both so if we write 21 then the value will be generated between 10 to 20 because 21 is excluded so one less than that is generated great so now once we have this n we have to click our button and this is the button let me locate the button and the id of button is add row so let's do one thing let's write a for each loop so for each value of i int i in n uh, sorry uh, it will not be like that because n is not a collection so here we need to write a for loop so for int i 0 i less than n i plus plus if we start from 0 we have to take till less than n or if we start from 1 we have to take i less than equal to n now in this loop what we are going to do is we are going to click our button one by one so we can say add row btn dot click that is the function we are going to call on add row button now before we can call this function we should locate that button so we will say i web element add row button is equal to driver dot find element by dot id and the id for the button was add row that is what we saw here so let's locate the element by id and once we have located the element we are clicking that uh, that button one by one now once we click that button what we will do in the end we should validate that number of rows in the table have increased by the value n that is the assertion that is the validation this test case would have so after doing this again we should be uh, finding the elements that are there in our data table so again let's go the final row count and the final row count is going to be again table dot find elements and this will be the get count of final rows and once we go there we have initial row count we have final row count and the validation that we are going to put is assert dot r equal we will say the value n that we have 
must match with final row count n comma final row count minus initial row count so take an example if initially rows were 5 then we clicked this button three times final count will be 8 so initial 5 final 8 8 minus 5 is 3 so that sh that must match n and that's the validation we are putting for this test and once the test is over then we will simply say driver dot quit so we'll exit our browser so that is the first test case we have written we have automated so let's quickly try to run this test and see that this test is working fine in isolation so let's go and build our project or our solution so once we build it our test will start appearing here we can right click and we can say run selected test and when we run the test we will see the first step it launches the browser then it maximizes the browser now it is taking us to that page so it has entered our test function and we can see it has clicked uh, the button and ultimately it has come out now when we wrote this test case we did not in involve any logging so let's put some logs here console right line and we can say opened the page and after opening the page we should be printing the initial row count so we say initial row count is init row count then let's copy this the value of n we will print random n is the value of n we will be printing so that through logs we know how many times we decided to click this button then after the clicking is done we get the final row count and the final row count will be something that is in the variable final row count and then we are doing the validation and if the validation fails for some reason then we will see the test will be marked as failed so let's try to do a failure scenario also if by mistake I say the count should match n plus 1 and if we rerun the test this time we will see logs will appear and our test will also fail because intentionally we have made our, uh, va our verification of the test to be failing so now the test is executing and at the bottom we can see here we will get some logs okay so this clicked a few number of times and the test has completed and failed so let's go here to our test case and at the bottom here we see a link for output that is where we will be able to find our logs so if I click that output you will see a window opens up here and here we see it says open the page it says initial row count was 1 n that was was 19 and after that the final row count uh, value uh, we expect is 20 but what happened is assertion failed and assertion is saying the message is expected value was 20 but it was found to be 19 so difference ideally should have been 19 because 19 number of times it should have been clicked and that is where we can kind of debug our tests if I click this stack trace then it takes us to the line telling this is the assertion that has failed so this is how basically we can take a look at debugging our test cases well so with those things in mind we have automated our first test case let me go back and fix the bug that we introduced and that way we have written our first test case now if we write the second test case here that will be verifying the deletion of rows in the table so that I'm leaving as an exercise rather than uh, coding the full function over here so I'll be taking a representation of tests from different test areas so if uh, you want to take a look at the how to write the deletion test case I have that automated over here so get row count delete all row test what ideally we should be doing there is we should be adding some random number of rows initially in the table after that what we will do is we will uh, go and select all the checkboxes 
and then we will click the delete button and in the end we want to ensure that row count becomes zero if we delete all the rows then row count will become zero now in case you want to make this test case is more dynamic in nature so the test steps that we can follow that uh, let me write that as an exercise here so that people who are watching this series they can have some tests that they can write on their own in case you face any issues in automating the test cases or you come across any blockers feel free to leave a comment here and I'll try my best to help you as soon as possible so delete row button functionality so this is the test I'm leaving as an exercise so the first step we should be uh, open page the second step will be click add row button random number of times so that you have some rows in the table to begin with third step you can do is uh, print initial row count next generate a random number between so if let's assume initial row count is n so generate a random number between uh, 1 to n and let's assume that random number is m now fifth step is select m rows from the table so this table that we have after adding random number of rows let's say right now there are three number of rows initially so we will generate a random number m between 1 2 3 so it will be either 1 or 2 or 3 now what I should do let's say random number resulted into value 1 so what we should do is we should select only one row if the random number is 2 we should select two rows here after selecting m number of rows we should click the delete row button after this sixth step we are saying is click delete row button after clicking the delete row button make sure put an assertion here assert that row count now is now row count should be n minus m so that is what we have to validate that means if initially there were n rows which is 3 we selected two rows we said delete row now the count should be n minus 1 so that is the uh, validation of our test case which we are leaving as an exercise so great that winds up this part of our uh, discussion in next part we are going to add more test cases in two more categories so let so we will begin with that in the next uh, video